Good afternoon. Today we are going to speak or we are going to learn about writing skills. In the previous lectures, we have been talking about communication. We have been talking about communication in different ways and in different ways we have learned how to communicate with people. And in that, we have also talked about how to write and when we talk about written communication, this is what we are going to talk about today. Writing, the name itself indicates that it needs a lot of effort, it needs a lot of passion to write something in a good manner. As is very clear from what has been written, the quality of your life is the quality of your communication, both with yourself and others. Very true. How well you are communicating with others, it is reflected in your writing. And if you really are communicating well with others or if you are really living a good life communicating well with others, definitely you will be able to communicate it in writing through. And this is what we are going to learn today that how to make our writing a good and an effective one. It has to be good but at the same time it has to be emphatic, it has to be effective it has to be such that when one reads, he or she derives the same pleasure as he or she talks to you or communicates to you. So this is what we are going to learn today. Let's move ahead. A very famous critic, Samuel Johnson, has very rightly said, What is written without effort is in general read without pleasure. As is clear, no gain without pain. So if somebody writes something in a very very general manner or if somebody writes something without doing any kind of research or without doing any kind of previous reading or further reading and then the person writes it. So definitely the quality of that writing would not be a good one. When you are writing something, as I have been telling you earlier also, that when you are writing something, it has to be written with thorough research. By research, I mean that you should read the topic, you should have made your own ideas, you should have thought about the topic so well that when you put it down in words and sentences, it comes out as an effective whole. Now that is what this critic is trying to tell us in by writing it in this manner that what is written without effort is in general read without pleasure. Now it would be meaningless to write something trash, something that the reader doesn't enjoy. You have seen the good works, you have seen the good authors, you have must have read good authors. Now when you read, read good authors, you would see they do a lot of research before putting down their ideas, before penning down their ideas, before they put their ideas into the uh, writing. They do a lot of research and that research is reflected into their writing. So in order to be a good writer or in order to communicate effectively through written communication, you should be very very cautious you should pay attention to the words that you are choosing. You should pay attention to the sentence structure. And you should pay attention to certain other things also which we are going to learn in today's lecture. Writing skills. Generally, writing is meant to be something which is very very productive. We call it a productive learning. Whatever you learn, it has to be productive. But in writing, particularly, we lay more emphasis on the sentence structure, how you have constructed the sentence, what words you have used into it, and how effectively you have presented your ideas. And in this line only, we also read about composition. The literal meaning of the word compose is to form together, as you can see here, it means to form by putting together. Now, what is the meaning of composition then? Composition means, 
or it is a piece of writing formed by putting together the ideas you have on a subject. Very clear that a piece of writing that you in which you put down your ideas or you pen down your ideas is said to be a composition. Now how do you write a good composition? What all are the characteristics of a good composition? How should you write a good composition? It all depends upon your ideas and your research. There are two important things that you should take care when you are writing a composition. And in that the first thing is you must have some ideas on the subject about which you are going to write. Whatever you are going to write, you must have an idea about that. And you must be able to put those ideas in such a way that they form a effective whole or that they give a complete meaning to whatever you have written. And for that we always say that there should be a beginning, middle and end. Now the beginning should be such, it should be a very effective beginning. It should lead to the middle and the, the beginning, the middle and the last that is the end should be in companion with each other or should tally with each other so that together when you read it, it makes a whole, it makes a complete sense. When you are doing this exercise, what all things you should keep in mind? Let us learn all that also. The very first thing that you should remember is organizing your thoughts. It is very important to organize your thoughts. Like when you have been given a topic, for example, let us talk about honor killing. These days, honor killing has become very, very prevalent topic of discussion among the youth and among the country worldwide. Now when you are given the topic as honor killing, you should first of all research that what is honor killing all about? What does it mean? What is the meaning of the word honor killing? In which parts of the country is it happening? How are you able to uh, substantiate it? Or how are you able to prove that this is happening at such and such places? You will prove it examples but before that what you have to do is first organize your thoughts whatever comes to your mind do not start writing it randomly first make a rough draft of it organize your ideas and then decide that this will go into the first paragraph this will go into the second and this will go into the third paragraph or the last or the concluding paragraph and that is why I say Begin with the main idea. What is the main idea that you want to talk about in it? Write three ideas. When you write the main idea, write three ideas to support the main idea. Whatever is the main idea, write three more ideas to it so that in support of that main idea, you have three other ideas to support it. And then determine the point of your thesis or the work that you are going to do or what you are going to write finally when you are making the final draft. There are certain things that you should know and you must know before you are, before you start writing something. Then the first thing is words. That is, you must have a basic vocabulary of words or basic vocabulary about how to use the word in the right context. That would make your writing a meaningful one or that would give a meaning to your writing. The second point we say is sentences. As you can see over here, you must know how to construct a simple sentence. Whatever sentence you are making, you must know to make it grammatically correct. The sentence should be a grammatically correct one. The third we say you must have a general idea of what you are going to write about. And last but not the least, you must 
be able to cite certain examples. You must be able to quote some examples to substantiate your idea. You must be able to give something specific to say that whatever you have written is the one that has been, that has already happened and you are just trying to bring that to life. And when you are able to do that, we would certainly be able to give a meaning to what has been written and what has been conveyed to the other person. Remember, it is not only what you say that matters or counts. It is how you say it that also is important. It is very clear that you can say a simple thing in a very very simple manner yet make it a very very strong one or an emphatic one and you can also say a meaningless thing in a meaningless manner that will make no impression or that will not be counted to account. So in order to sound good, in order to make the audience grip to whatever you have written, you will have to read it, reread it and structure it in a way that it gives meaning to the whole sentence and for that we say that first make a rough draft and then make a farewell and then the final one. Now when you are make, taking so much effort or you are laying down so much effort on your writing skills, certainly the outcome of it would be a good one. And while we are writing a composition, you have to take care of certain things and you have to cater to the basic need of the human being or you have to cater to the basic human instincts. And that instinct is to share stories. All of us love to hear stories. All of us love to tell stories. But it depends upon how the storyteller has written it. The main idea is communicated in such a way that it is interesting or it is disinteresting. It all depends upon how the storyteller tells it. You can always see or when you read newspapers, when you read magazines or when you read novels, you can see the same thing written in several different ways. And you can then find out that yes, these are the forms of writing in which a single thing can be written in several different ways and yet be emphatic, yet be a one who strongly advocates his or her own ideas. So sometimes the aim of the storyteller is simply to entertain or to provide a moment of escape from the business of the day or the horrors of the night. That means that the storyteller may have a different aim altogether when he or she is writing a story. At times it is just telling a plain incident or just sharing what he has felt or what he has seen in his life and he just wants to share that thing with the readers and that is why he has made it plain and simple. At times it is written in a manner to provide a escape from the, uh, from, the, from the horrors of our life, to give us some kind of solace, to give us some kind of peace and that is why we resort to writing. And that is why we resort to reading perhaps. Most of us are not very good writers nor are we very good readers. But we should try to be one. And how to, should we try is the first step is to read. When you read, you come to know what has happened, how it has happened and how it has been written. After reading, please jot down those ideas in a piece of paper and try and construct your own idea about it. Rewrite it into your own words. This will help develop or this will help you develop the habit of writing. As we were discussing about the composition, let us move ahead and we were telling that storytellers or the persons who tell us the stories, they have a different aim when they are telling it. Sometimes it is to provide solace, sometimes it is just sharing a feeling 
or incident that happened in their life but sometimes the aim of the storyteller is also to instruct through his or her writings to tell us that this is a way you should lead life or this is a way that you should do or these are the ways that you should opt in your life and you should not opt in your life. Sometimes it may be a kind of instruction uh, through his or her work and just trying to help people that the way he has understood the things or the way he has taken the things you may or may not take it but there is something called instruction. He is trying to instruct you on certain lines and that is what is the aim of the storyteller when he or she is sharing with you those things. Let us move ahead. When we talk of writing, when we talk of composition, we say that there are two kinds of composition. One is guided composition and another is free composition. In a way, in short, we can say guided composition as the name indicates, it is something in which the teacher or the instructor guides you towards writing. For example, in your school days, when you were in school, you were given guidelines to write the paragraph. You were given a topic and along with that topic, you were given the guidelines that these all things should be covered into the paragraph. So that is said to be guided writing in which uh, the instructor is guiding you and the benefit of it is, it is a kind of directed writing in which the student is directed towards what the instructor wants out of the student. In a guided composition, a student is provided with instructions and supportive ideas that help to compose a suggested theme or subject. In a way, the instructor is helping you through the ideas that has been provided by the instructor, you are able to frame the sentences, you are able to uh, develop that idea into a paragraph and further substantiate it into your own writing. So, in a way you are being guided and directed and that is why it is said to be guided composition. It has a drawback. In it, the student, it is, it seems that the some students feel that it is a kind of forced learning in which you are being, the ideas are being imposed because it is guided. Some students feel that if the ideas that have been given by the instructor, they are kind of uh, imposition on him and he or she is not able to present his or her own idea, own ideas in the, in the writing. So this becomes a limitation to guided composition. That is why we limit guided, guided composition at the beginning. That is towards the initial phases of learning. When you are learning how to write or how to compose a thing, towards that stage only the guided composition is used. Primarily in the schools, there is a lot of guided writing. There is a lot of... Uh, effort made on guided composition wherein it is difficult for students to form their own ideas and there the teachers help them through this kind of composition that is guided composition in which they give their ideas in the form of writing and the students are then asked to develop a composition by using those ideas. Now, the name itself indicates about free composition. Let us not talk about what is free composition. In free composition, the student is allowed to develop his or her own ideas. Unlike guided composition, wherein the students were given the ideas and then they were asked to form a paragraph or a composition based on those ideas only. Here, the student is made free. The student is free to generate his own ideas. The student is free to write about that topic with his or her own ideas. You can read it out and just read aloud what are the benefits of guided composition. It permits a student to develop his own ideas and to create his own style of writing as he chooses. Basically, it depends upon the student then, whatever kind of writing he chooses. If he chooses to make uh, the writing that is uh, to, uh, to describe
disclose the end first and then continue with it, it is his choice. Or if he feels that no, I would first uh, frame the story and then at the end give it a, give uh, display the end or speak on the moral. It again depends upon the call of the student, upon the student, how he or she presents the ideas. It makes students more comfortable with the art of writing. Certainly, there is a lot of freedom in that and they can write as they wish. It can help students discover things to write about and it can indirectly improve their formal writing. Now their formal writing can also be improved through this but the main thing that is uh, or that we focus in, for in free composition is research. That is in guided composition you were at least being given some ideas but if you do not have an exposure to composition or if you do not research the topic well you will not be able to generate your own ideas and in that matter free composition would be a difficult one. So when you are writing it is always beneficial that you do some kind of research and as I have always told you that whenever you, you are reading a newspaper or you are reading a magazine whatever portion you have read read and reread that passage and then jot down with that, those ideas and reconstruct that article in your own words and write it down until and unless you write you will not be able to remember what you have read secondly you will not be able to expose yourself to the world of writing so in order to enter into the world of writing you have to do a little bit of research you will have to provide some food for thought to your brain also so that you are able to develop ideas and finally put them in a manner that it becomes meaningful. In the next class we will be talking about the ways to write a good composition and what all it needs to make a writing an effective one. Some ways to talk about uh, good writing. That's, that is what we are going to discuss in the previous class. We will also make a revision of it. Till then. Please revise what has been taught to you, write, read, most importantly read and then write whatever you have read and that would help you emerge as a good writer or develop good writing skills in you. That's all for today. Hope you understood the lecture. If there is something that you have not understood, please let me know and I will be happy to explain that to you. Thank you very much.